<laughs> Good morning, beloveds. Cats are not dogs. They are not. But occasionally they will do things that look like very doggish behavior. Um, I've, uh, nobody's in the guest room since Hayes passed and he's been gone for almost two months now. Um, but I come in here to do the live stream. And so, uh, I started calling foster when I come in here. And so it's, you know, approximately 15, 20 minutes where he gets me to himself. And, uh, so today I, I got up to come do the live stream and I called and I saw him get down and come running out of the bedroom uh, to come to the guest room to do this with me. And so it's just, ah, it makes me happy. He comes to do this with me. Okay. So, um, it is the first, it, it is the first day of fall, but according to the, the, the meteorologist that I was watching, it actually doesn't start until nine o'clock tonight. So it is still technically summer because <laughs> it's going to be 98 degrees here. They're even talking like in places it could hit like a hundred. I'm just like record breaking. It is the 20, it is the end of fall and it is, mm, okay. Um, so it is September 22nd. Our title is stillness and knowing. Our first quote is the Lord is righteous in all its ways and holy in all its works. And that is Psalm 148, 17. Um, the second quote is God is an immediate presence and an immediate experience in my mind and soul. And I am conscious of this perfect presence, this divine wisdom, this eternal wholeness. And that is the science of mind page, um, I think it says 559 and I'm, I can read it, but it's a little fuzzy. So I'm going to give up and use the glasses. Um, slip quietly into an atmosphere of absolute stillness and be still. Accept the quiet within you. Just be still. Then affirm, my life is of God. In quietness, I know that spirit is indeed the life within me. Divine spirit lives and moves and has some part of its infinite being in me. I reflect upon this idea. I let it become something I know with true conviction. At the center of everything, there is a pool of peace from which qu quietude and harmony and healing proceed. Behind every human anxiety, there is the right solution waiting to be expressed. Go back to the consciousness of God within you in your meditation now and know that here at the center of your life, you have access to that wisdom, which is able to guide you in the experience of wholeness and perfection as you rely upon it with deep and solemn conviction. Know that there is that within you, which is God's own presence and which will tell you of itself. Be still and know that I am God is the great assurance to us. I enter in consciousness that place of the Most High and abide in the awareness of God's presence. I am receptive to the wisdom which gives me the knowledge of the knowledge to bring harmony and right action into every phase of my daily living. I now understand the great prayer of the ages. I am that which thou art, thou art that which I am. All right. So right here in the middle, it says, go back to the consciousness of God within you in your meditation now and know that here at the center of your life, you have access to the wisdom, which is able to guide you. Um, know that within you, God's own is God's own presence, which will tell you of itself. Um, and that's one of the interesting things when you look at uh, the Gnostics, when you look at the Essenes, when you look at um, the, the, I'm going to say the mystic traditions, because every branch of religion, at, you know, the, all of the major ones have a mystic version. Uh, if you look at the, the, of Islam, the Sufis are the mystic version of, uh, Islam, uh, of which Rumi 
who is literally the best-selling poet in the entire world, Rumi was a Sufi. A Sufi. Um, so uh, that's what they say. If you want to know God, the best way to know God is to go within yourself. Uh, because the source of your own being, which is God, will tell you of itself in that. And that is the point of meditation. Meditation, treatment, prayer is when we talk to God. Meditation is when we listen to God. Uh, so that, so if you want to know the source of your own being, meditation, that, that is where it is at. That is where, uh, that is where you want to go and you listen. It, it's, and that's one of the reasons why nature meditations can be really good. Uh, everybody kind of assumes that meditation is like sitting cross-legged, you know, in lotus position on a pillow, staring at nothing for, you know, hours on end. And there's so many more different ways, um, especially those of us who are a little frenetic. <laughs> it's like we never stop moving. Um that walking meditations or, you know, moving meditations are super important. You know, you know, walk to a waterfall, sit at the waterfall for a little while, watch the waterfall. That's a great place to connect with the source of your own being. Um, being in nature uh, is very, is very good at helping people connect to their own nature. But not everybody's happy in nature. So, you know, if you're, if you're not a big fan of the bugs, then there are other ways to do it. Uh, but the point is, is to connect to the source of your own being. Uh, it's called stillness and knowing. He, 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 oh, and it's Craig Carter, by the way, it's CC. Um, and so when we move through this, this life, one of the things we want to make sure that we're making time for is meditation. We want to make time to listen. We want to make time to listen to God, or, or as we like to say, to listen to the source of our own being. If you, when you connect to the source of your own being, you learn more about who God is. You learn more about who you are. You learn more about ways that you can interact with the rest of the world. Um, that's why when I talk about, uh, opening the windows of your soul, uh, the source of heaven, the source of happiness, the source of joy, the source of creativity, that comes from within. And that comes from that willingness to connect to the source of your own being, connect to God, the source of everything or spirit. If that may, you know, we all have our trigger words. So whatever word m makes it make sense to you, please use that. That's one of the reasons why when practitioners do treatments, they're like, okay, let, let's, let's find, feel free to use these words and earnest because he's the one that started. It's like, feel free to use these words as your own. And if they don't speak to you, then change them until they do. Um, which is again, go back to the point of meditation. It's to connect with the source of your own being. So if one style of meditation doesn't work for you, there are multiple kinds. There are an infinite varieties of ways to meditate. So find one that works for you. Absolutely. One of my favorite stories when I taught um, practical mysticism was absolutely that, um, you know, she, I had one woman and she was like, "There, I can't. The meditation, it's just. And so I suggested, let's talk about moving meditations. She went on a hike it's where somewhere in the hill country, I think, and had the best meditation she'd ever had in her life. So it's like, keep trying different kinds of meditation. There's multiple different kinds uh, until you find one that connects you with the source of your own being. And you know that it has done that when you come back feeling better than you went in. Kind of like taking a nap. Generally, when you take a good nap, you know you've taken a good nap because you wake up feeling better than you when you you, you laid to sleep. Um, one of our teachers, uh, Marsha, would she would joke about naptations, naptations, um, where you start with a meditation and end up taking nap. Well, if that works for you, do it, do it. Um, there's the, the good news is, is there's really no wrong way to meditate. 
uh, the only way you would say that you were doing it wrong is if it wasn't working for you. Um, and then you just try something else, you know, uh, just because a moving meditation works for me. Cause the best meditation for me was when I was running. Absolutely. Because I gave my body something to do and then my mind could rest, which is the point of meditation. Let your mind rest, connect with the source of your OB. It's pretty fantastic. Pretty amazing. So, um, but he, he right there in there gave you just straight up gave you the best, um, mission. So if the mission today is to go back to the consciousness of God within you, in your meditation, that's the mission today. Should we choose to expect it, accept it is to go back to the consciousness and recognize when we go into meditation, what our goal is, is to connect with God, to connect with spirit, to connect with that eternal source of love, that eternal source of joy, that eternal source of creativity. That's what we are doing when we meditate. Um, and when you meditate, when you connect with that, any of those words that are qualities of God can be the goal or all of them. So if it is joy that you want, if it is happiness that you want, if it is creativity that you want, then that's what you're going to meditate on. That's the quality of God. That's the aspect of God that we're connecting on, connecting to um, in our meditations. One of the reasons why there, there are, I always like to lean back on the Hindus um, because when you look at the Hindu pantheon, there's so many gods. But when you talk to the Hindu pantheon, the Hindus will tell you there's only one God. There's only one God. But God is so big, because God is literally everything, um, that it's too big for us to encompass. So all these little gods that you see aren't actually a separate God. They are simply the aspect of the God that we are engaging with at the moment. There's one. There's the one source of our own being, but it's a little overwhelming. Actually, it's a lot overwhelming, but that's the really cool thing. So we, we, we pull it down into bite-sized chunks. What we have to remember is when we enter into meditation with that bite-sized chunk, that's not all of God. That is simply the part that we need at the moment and that there's more and we can interact with different parts at different times. Whatever it is that you need already exists in the mind of God. So go back into the consciousness in your meditation. Go back to that God consciousness. Go back to that all encompassing spirit and see where it takes you. So uh, that's the mission today. It's, it's all there. It's all there. Take the time out to meditate. All right. Uh, really, you push the beans and you get the means. Um, I was touching his feet and his claws were out. So I was like, you touch the beans, you get the means. And I'm immediately distracted by the cat. So I'm going to encourage you, as I always do, to do the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself. Sometimes that looks like meditation. Sometimes that looks like a napitation. Sometimes that looks like taking a deep breath. Sometimes that looks like taking a walk. Sometimes that looks like taking a moment to fully enter into the moment of joy or pleasure, or enjoyment, or, you know, whatever it is. It is self-care, but it is also joy. It is also happiness. That is doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself is about taking care of yourself. But it's also about making sure that you are making time to enjoy your life. God wants us to be happy. Really, that. God wants us to be happy. Life wants growth and abundance and that. And we can participate in that by taking care of ourselves and making sure that we are making time to enjoy things. All right. And it can be big and it can be small and it doesn't matter. Point is to do it every day. 
If you do it every day, you create a habit. I.e., I've created the habit of the cat coming into to the live stream with me. Um, so we're good now. You know, it's it, it it's awesome, and I love it. And you know, this is something that I have created, uh, and it brings me joy. It brings me joy. So, habit. First response, not a reaction, but a response. Default setting. Loving, kind, compassion. Practice on yourself because you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You will never look in the eyes of someone that God does not love, especially your own. Okay, so um, you have the mission. You have the, the spiritual practice of love, kind, compassion, and the other things are the usual things. Make sure that you take time out to engage your mind and your body. Make sure that you drink plenty of water. It's going to be bloody hot today, so please hydrate. Um, get that early in your day bright light. It will help to reset those circadian rhythms. It is science. You want to improve your energy and your sleep? Bright light early in the day. Uh, early in your day. And then, uh, as, as, as Ernest says, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. And I've started to call it our superpower because we connect with the source of our own being through meditation and pre treatment and prayer and all and the spiritual practices. And we understand that heaven is a state of mind, a state of consciousness. So we create that around ourselves by connecting with the source of our, our own our own being, bringing that into the material world so that we create our own bubble of heaven. And other people go, hey, what do you know that I don't know? And they learn to create their own heaven as well. So, and then we have all these little bubbles of heaven walking around and we become one great big bubble of heaven. It's possible. I have faith. I have faith. All right, beloveds. Um, and as always, take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. Okay, um, yeah, so here's where I remind you about the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. Uh, we had a, t a huge technical challenge because one of, part of our tech crew is in Europe. <laughs> and he changed the settings. And yeah, so the soul session happened. We weren't able to do it on, on Facebook Live, but I did, we were able to do it and record it. So it's up on YouTube already. So please check that out. Um, Reverend Sheila and her son, soon to be Reverend Stephen, were amazing. They had an amazing conversation. It was fantastic. Uh, so check it out on YouTube. I did upload it to Facebook. So it's on Facebook as well. Uh, right now, I think the two posts are really close together. Um, they were wonderful, and we definitely want to invite them back. You know, and if you're in New Orleans, please, you know, swing in and see uh, soon to be Reverend Stephen at uh, Uni. He's at the Unity of New Orleans. So um, they just had a fantastic conversation with our own Reverend Jesse, and it was great. So check it out. Um, you want to know what's going on in um, with the center? Email info at creativelife.org. Those hot links are hot. Uh, I am the running Rev Ryan on the social media. So if you want are interested in these daily readings, you can also check me out on my uh, YouTube page, which is the running Rev Ryan YouTube page. So check that out. And because uh, I've been doing this for two and a half years now. So <laughs> I've said a lot. And um I think that's what I know. So I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a wondrous day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and well represented. All right. As I have said, you will never look into the eyes of someone God does not love, including yourself. So. All right. Um, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you. Oh, I'm going to be early tomorrow. I have a doctor's appointment at 10 15. Um, I'm a week out on my eye surgery. Uh, and so uh, I will I will do this a little early rather than late is my plan. Because uh, Sunday or Friday is my day of rest. So we'll see. Um, but it will get done. So if you don't catch me live, you can always go back and watch the recording a little bit later. Uh, but I will do it early 
all right, I'm, I think around 8.15, or so, not 8.15, 8.45 is my plan. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right. So know that you are loved and I will see you next time.